Hey class, let's check this example out. This is in the very first homework section for your province stats class. Um, it is similar to number three on your homework. A data set with whole numbers has a low value of 20 and a high value of 89. Find the class width for a frequency table with seven classes. When you calculate the class width, You take the highest minus the lowest and divide that by the number of classes. So for this problem, we have 89 minus 20 divided by 7 which is 69 over 7 and round up always round up this comes out to like 9.8 and even in your textbook it says if, if this happens to come out to a whole number go ahead and round up one more time to the very next um, if it's a decimal, just go to the nearest whole number above it. If it comes out to a whole number, then round up to the very next one also. And again, you can check that out in your ebook, but that's what it definitely does say. And so if we take 9.8 and round it up to the next whole number, we get 10. In order to find the class limits for a frequency table with those seven classes, we take our smallest value, which in this problem is 20. That's given in the very first line. Because our class width is 10, we can go ahead and fill in the remainder The second column, because we don't want 30 to count twice, we have to stop it at 29. And then just keep adding 10. And our last value would be 89. The next problem in your homework set, you are asked, how long does it take to finish the 1,161 mile Iditarod dog sled race from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska? Finish times to the nearest hour for 57 dog sled teams are shown below. For this problem, use five classes. Now, of course, when the data gets a little bit more, I don't know, I say cluttery, we have to be careful to identify the highest and smallest. Subtract those and divide by five for this problem. Let's see if we can't find, and sometimes it takes some time to identify the highest, but that's ultimately what we're looking for is the highest and the lowest. And we're gonna divide by five this time. try to make that a little neater all right so let's take a look okay so if I've looked at it right 341 is the largest value in the table actually the highest score is 360 it's Oh, it drives you blind to do these sometimes. 360. And that one is here. 
the lowest that I found is 236. And let's see, where'd I find that? 236, right up here. And I believe that's the smallest. Okay. All right, and again, we're doing five classes. So highest minus lowest divided by five. 360 minus 236, that's 124 over 5. Rounded up, rounded up, divided by 5, that's 24.8. So we're going to use a class width of 25. Now to set up the class limits, let's take our smallest value, which was 236. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill out all the lower ends of the class limits. We have a class width of 25, so if you add 25, you're gonna get 261. Add 25 to 286. Add 25 to 311. And then finally add another 25, you get 336. Now this class limit going back to the top row, uh, right before you get to 261, you have 260. So we'll have to stop it just shy of 261. Add 25. Or another way to look at it is you're going to stop at the whole number just shy of the one on the left and the next row down. But you can always just keep adding 25. So we have a 310, 335, and finally 360. Five classes, five rows. Class boundaries. You take your class limit. I'm going to do these in blue. You take your class limit and you round it down a half from the lower and round it up a half from the upper. So that's going to be 235.5. to 260.5, 260.5, these are okay to match on the upper and lowers, like 260.5 can be the upper class boundary on the first row, it can be the lower on the second, in fact, that's why there's no overlap, I meant um, there's nothing left out, all right. Okay, go down a, whoops, that's a two. Sorry, y'all. 285 and a half, 310 and a half, 310 and a half, 335 and a half, and then finally 335.5 to 360.5. The center of each class is called the midpoint, and to calculate that, you take your lower class limit, add your upper class limit for each row. These are going to be from the numbers in black, that's why I drew the arrows like I did. If we take 236 plus 260, divide by 2, we get 248. Two sixty one plus two eighty five divided by two we get two seventy three. Now you don't have to make these long calculations every time. The class width of twenty five is going to help keep us in check. So if you just progressively add twenty five, you're going to get two ninety eight, three twenty three, and finally three forty eight. 
So don't forget to use those adding 25 tricks. Whatever your class width is, you just keep adding that number and you'll be in good shape. All right, let's move to the frequency. In the table at the top for this first row, we need to figure out how many of those values from the table are from 236 to 260. Now for the frequency column, you go back over to your class limits. The first row, any value that's 236 up to 260, we're gonna count. It's very helpful if you, on your paper or on your screen, it depends on how you wanna do it. Um, what I would recommend is, since we've already got these values, slowly cross them off. Now I'm not gonna do them all just for time sakes, but for example, if we spot a number that's 236 to 260, we're gonna count it. And cross it out. So that's one, two, you get the idea. So you'll wanna do that for each row. Our first row, it turns out that there are four values. I only crossed two of them out, but there are four, a total of four values that are 236 to 260. The second row, the number of values from the table from 261 to 285. And if you need to pause this and count them just to verify, you get a nine. The next row is 25 followed by 16 and then three. And here we're looking for how many. We were told that there's a total of 57 of these dog sled race times. So this column has a total of 57. When it comes to relative frequency, you take the frequency from that row, divide it by the grand total. So we're gonna take four divided by 57. In this homework problem, we're asked to round to two decimal places, so that's 0 0.07, 9 over 57. That's rounded as 0 0.16, 25 over 57. and so forth. Hmm. Cumulative frequency is where you keep a running total. The last column is cumulative frequency. And what it is, it's a running total of your frequency column. Like our first row was four. The second row is nine. If you add nine to that, you get 13. Then you add the third row's frequency, 25. That's 38. Add 16, that's 54. And then add three and you get 57. Remember, 57 was the number of dog race times. So that cumulative frequency should, at the very bottom, be the same as the total of your data points. Your histograms, whether it's frequency or relative frequency, will have the same shape. If it's a strict frequency histogram, then you make sure that each bar matches the height of the frequency from your table. For example, our first row uh, had a frequency of four, 
So your first bar is going to need to be four. Well, if you're careful and you look, since, and I left this multiple choice format because your uh, web assign is the same way. These two are out because those have decimal numbers representing relative frequency. This one is a straight up frequency. Uh, so now out of the top two, we've got to be careful, and you really got to watch the web assigns good about making them look the same where there's just a little bit of difference. The horizontal row, the finish times, you're going to want to go with the one. that has the class boundaries. That's a dead giveaway. If you can get it down to two out of the four, then your bars for your histogram will be marked at the class boundaries. Having said that, now let's also look at the shape of this. If you kind of rough out and smooth out the edges of this thing, it's not a perfect bell curve, but it is shaped like a mound. And so that's the answer we're gonna pick for part E. Let's look at some the differences between these. By modal, that's like um, if you have two humps in your data, Skewed left is if you have a really long tail on the left side and then it mounds up very quickly. Skewed right is if it has a mound early and then it tapers off a long ways later. Uniform is if it's just straight across. And so hopefully that'll help you pick out which um, shape distribution you have. This one is mound shaped, if you look at your histogram, so that's the one that we go with.